Hey guys, thanks for tuning in as always. <clears throat> Today I'm going to uh, share with you some what I consider some really cool content. And we're going to be taking a look at a uh, kind of an up and coming maker um, amongst the, the tactical folding knives. And that is Mr. Chad Nell out of, uh, he's down in St. George, Utah. So here's his card, here's all his contact information if you want to get in touch with him, website, email, and so forth. And uh, today we're going to be taking a look at two of his offerings out of the three that he currently makes. And I want to thank my, my local knife friend Chad T for letting me borrow his Templar. And then Mr. Chad Nell, the maker, for sending me his uh, prototype to share with you guys. So anyways, let's get into it. Um, so Mr. Chad Nell... He has been making fixed blades for the last four years, <clears throat> and he's he's kind of been tutored under uh, Mr. Steve Johnson, uh, who I believe is his uncle, and then Mr. John John Young, who was a, a friend he actually went to high school with, and both are renowned uh, fixed blade makers, and that's where Chad got his start, was, was doing fixed blades, and he's been doing that for four years, and just recently moved into um, kind of this genre here. So anyways, the first model here, is the Templar, and this is his uh, his smallest amongst his offerings. And this is a uh, it's a titanium frame lock, and it uses a caged and captured bearing system. And then he has the ESG, and ESG that's the first letter of each of his children's name. <clears throat> and this one is a frame lock as well, and it uses also the. Um, caged and captured bearing system and it's a flipper. So he's a left-handed guy, hence this is a left-handed model. And uh, yeah. So let's talk about the specs real quick um, now that I've kind of briefly mentioned who he is. So let's start with the Templar here. Move that out of the way. Move that out of the way. So the Templar, this weighs in at 5.15 ounces um, as you would expect from a full titanium knife. The blade um, this really cool harpoon style, this one's been given a nice work finish. Um, but the blade length is about 3.3 inches from my measurements. The handle length is about 4.2 inches, so giving us a total length of 7.5 inches. So nice working, uh, really good EDC carry size. The handle thickness in this direction is 0.513 inches thick. So nice, nice slim profile, makes it easy to carry. And then the um, handle in this direction, the widest portion, is 1.38 inches thick. So, still leaves enough room for you to get things out of your pocket if you've got this clipped in there. Now, taking a look at the ESG, this particular one, let's hold it show side here, has a weight of 6 ounces, and uh, this is his largest model. There is one in between these two called the hybrid, which is essentially a larger Templar. So it's it's kind of in between these two as far as size goes. But the blade length on this one is 3.7 inches thereabout. Handle length is about 4.7 inches, giving us a total of about 8.4 inches overall. And the handle thickness is exactly the same as the Templar. It is 0.513 inches thick. And then in this direction, the widest portion here, which is at the top of the harpoon or the swedge, um, to here is about 1.42 inches. So still carries very well. Um, and yes, those are the two models that I have handy. And then again, the hybrid is the one that's kind of in between these two. So if you want the short and skinny on, a, on Mr. Chadnell here, I guess the most honest thing I can tell you is that I am now on his books. Um, after having gotten both of these and having the opportunity to talk to Mr. Nell on the phone, um, I'm, I'm really excited to get some work from him. And it's a Currently somewhere around a six month wait, um, but he's going to close his books once he gets to a year wait. He doesn't want guys waiting more than a year for a knife because as he said, a lot of things can happen in a year. Um, perhaps you'll change your mind, life situations can change. Um, you know, a lot can go on, so there's really no point in having people wait longer than a year. So when it gets a year, he'll close his books. All right, let's break this down. So as I already mentioned, he's kind of started off in the uh, the folding genre. Um, and one thing that was interesting that he said was making folders, I'm sorry, fixed blade genre. One thing that he said that was interesting is making folders is actually a lot easier on his hands um, than making fixed blades. I guess the 
you know, all the polishing and the hammering and painting and all of those things that goes into fixed blades is um, a lot more taxing. And at the end of the day, he said his hands just really ache if he's been working on fixed blades all day. But when he does folders, um, you know, at the end of the day, he's not, his hands aren't cramping up and tired and he can do other things. So um, that's, that's an interesting note. You know, I don't really know much about uh, fixed blades. I know that there's a whole kind of subculture within the knife community who are very much into, you know, the hows and the whys and how they're made. Um, but his wait time for his fixed blades is actually two years long. And uh, the prices on those are, are quite <laughs> quite expensive. But with the amount of handwork that, that I believe goes into it, I'm sure it's very, very well merited. So anyhow, um, now one thing that you'll see on all of his knives are these copper inlays. And this is kind of his signature. This is something that I've seen him do on the handles of a few, um, definitely on the blades of all of them. Um, it's on here on the ESG as well, but this is kind of his uh, his signature, and this is a technique that comes from making fixed blades. Um, essentially, I believe he said putting the handles together. So don't don't hold me to the fire on this one. I'm not a knife maker, but the way that he accomplishes these is he will drill a hole through, um, you know, three holes obviously, and then he will chamfer each side on the front and the back. And then he cuts off a piece of copper and then he basically hammers it down. So if you can imagine the shape of an hourglass, um, that's essentially how it's being held in place there. And he does that before the heat treat and then obviously, you know, when he's grinding the blade, um, it smooths it out and makes it completely flush. So I thought that was just fascinating hearing how he actually did this because I really had no idea. I couldn't even fathom doing this before he explained it to me. So, um, and it, apparently that comes from uh, when you're making fixed blades and you're putting the handles, um, you know, wood or whatever material you'll use, um, and it's, I believe that's called peening. Um, but again, don't hold me, don't hold me to that. I, uh, I'm just paraphrasing what he said as best I can. So, anyhow, so copper is his signature. Um, now let's break it down, um, the reasons that I really like his knives. So, Obviously, he's a new and upcoming maker. His wait time's not too long. Um, the fit and the finish and the quality is all excellent. It's very smooth, um, really nice deployment. You can use your middle finger, you can use your thumb. One other thing that's really interesting is I, as I was talking to him, he said, well, what do you think about the, um, you know, the knife, the Templar here? I didn't have the ESG with me yet. And I said, it's great. I said, I wish that you could use something more akin to a spider hole. It's a little bit difficult for me to get my, my big thumb in there and, uh, you know, kind of flick it open like that, um, a little bit more difficult. And he said, when you're placing an order, tell me your hand size. And I, he said that he will adjust the, um, essentially the thumb hole here. He'll make, he can kind of, I guess, drop the frame down a little bit, put a bigger thumb hole in here if you've got bigger hands. Um, and I thought that was really cool. So if I do end up getting a, a Templar, I'll have him do kind of a larger thumb hole here so it's easier for me to get into. Or if I go for an ESG, which is, what I suspect, then I will have the flipper. So I won't really need a thumb hole. But uh, anyhow, so let's let's kind of break this down. So as I mentioned, really nice uh, working finish, kind of an acidet stone wash here on the cutting portions of the knife, and then also on the swedge. Really cool copper inlay, looks like a, a, mach a belt satin on the flats here. Um, so nice contrast, great two-tone look. The handle, this has a uh, really nice orange peel texture. And then obviously it's been anodized gold and he's got these holes in here um, that all line up perfectly. And it's a stylistic element, does decrease the weight I'm sure a little bit. Um, and then here's the lanyard hole. So lanyard hole, blade comes nowhere near the lanyard hole, which is good. Um, and he's he's utilized pretty much the entire knife. I mean, the blade to handle ratio is, is pretty much all the way to the end. Um, nicely centered, again, it's, it's a captured and um, and cage bearing system, and what that means is if you open this up, the the little balls, which are 440C, he, I believe he uses the uh, he uses Alpha Knife supply bearings, but they're encased in a disc, so they don't run about. And then in between the 440C balls and the frame, um, there is a hardened piece of, of polished stainless steel on each side, so it's ca it's uh, caged. Um, with his first with his first couple of folders, he didn't have the stainless steel in there, and what he found is that the um, the stainless steel balls were running a track into the titanium and you kept having to tighten the the pivot because it was introducing a little bit of play. 
So he's since rectified that um, and it just makes for a really smooth knife. So, really cool. Um, pivot, I believe this is a just a Torx pivot on each side, goes with the rest of the hardware. Nice cohesive look. Pocket clip, 3D, um, titanium again, it's got the same kind of matching holes. There's a little bit of purple here on the sides, um, on the side of the pocket clip, just a nice little detail. But uh, anyways, the hardware's really nice. I, I think this one just looks really good. I mean, Chad, um, Chad had, Chad build this, Chad T had, Chad Nell build this, and a uh, really nice build. Um, I just like the way it turned out. Great texture, good ergos in the hand, um, even with my larger hands here. So, anyways, I like his designs. I asked him where he came up with it, and he said he just kind of sat down and doodled and just made something he liked, and then he went to work on it. And uh, he'll, he'll make them in plexiglass first. He'll do a, a complete prototype in plexi. Um, and then from there, he will go on to actually uh, build the knife. So that's pretty cool, um, you know. But uh, let's see, what else is there to talk about on this one? Um, just a great presentation. Oh, um, the, the price. Let's talk about the prices on these. So uh, kind of the basic build here, titanium handles, you know, blade finish, whatever you want. Um, it starts out in the uh, 450 for the Templar. And then you can go up to 500 if you want to have an, an inlay of some sort. And what he'll do is he will um, basically mill out a portion of this, the middle of the handle, and he'll inlay some type of material. Um, and that way he leaves a bit of titanium as part of the frame. And then you kind of have a double bolster look. So that's the, um, the customization he'll do to the handles aside from the finish and the color and everything else. So you have a lot of options when you, when you place an order with him to choose from. He does carbonize the lock face. Let's check it, look at lock up here. Um, peeking through, just looking around the camera. Looks like about 40%, um, no stick, nice and solid, just uh, just rock solid here on this one. So anyways, um, I know that Chad really likes his. Um, Chad T, my local friend, he's, he really likes this knife. Um, and again, it's just a great working finish. And uh, since I live in Utah, having a, a knife from a Utah maker, I think that's really cool. If I lived in Idaho, I'm sure I would have a, <clears throat> a Chris Reeve with an Idaho stamp on it, but uh, this will be the one that has my state stamp. So, anyways, that's that. Now, the the hybrid, sorry for jumping around so much here, there's just a lot to talk about. The hybrid, which is the one in between these two, um, price on that one starts at uh, 500 and it goes up to 550 depending on what, you know, if you want to do an inlay or not. Um, but then the finish and everything else, that's up to you. Now the ESG, again, which is named after his children, or the first letter of each of their name, this one starts in the $600 range and it goes up to 650 if you want to do an inlay, um, which again creates the double bolster look. Now this one has a sandblasted finish, um, really nice texture. He's carried this one for over a month now. It's not showing anywhere, so um, really kind of heavy duty finish on this one. And uh, here's the the tab for flipping. My only recommendation to him was to put a little bit of jimping right here on this side so it makes it a little bit easier to light switch. Um, and he said he'd be happy to do that. So, um, you know, if you're ordering from him, you may want to specify. He might do it on all of them, he might do it per request, but that was the only recommendation I had for, or that I would like to see on his knives. So, again, this one's his, it's his prototype. Again, the same kind of uh, his signature, which are the copper inlays there, which are really cool. This one has a nice satin finish. You have um, the vertical striations and the horizontal striations here. Gives it a nice two-tone look. Um, just a beautifully finished blade. Uh, really sharp, even grinds on both sides. Um, again, same build quality that we're seeing from the Templar. But uh, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, flipping action is good. Again, it's riding. It's uh, the 440C Alpha bearings. On, uh, that are captured and caged, so um, really good bearing system. And this one I'm having no trouble with, um, despite the fact that I'm right-handed and this is a left-handed configuration, so. Same 3D uh, titanium pocket clip, lanyard hole. You have the holes in the handle here for style and weight reduction, so. Anyway, so these are just the two offerings I wanted to share with you guys. Again, I'm on, I'm on his books, and I've got six months to, um, you know, see what he's working on and uh, see what he's posting. 
His website is probably the most up-to-date website among knife makers, and I'm sure that's just a symptom of being new. As you get really popular and you've got people asking to be put on closed books, I mean, there's, you know, that's time you can spend making knives as opposed to updating the website. But I do appreciate that it's updated right now. He's posting on Instagram. He's posting his builds and new knives. Um, he just sent uh, one of his knives off to get some professional photography done. So if you check Instagram, you can see some of that. And um, yeah, I've got six months to figure out what I want done. Now, gosh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, again, just a really nice guy. I had a great phone call with him. He was willing to, to give me some of his time and, and share, talk about the build and about the knives and what he's working on. So if you're interested in his work, um, I definitely get in contact with him soon to make sure that you get on the books here before, um, before they fill up and they get closed. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks so much to the Chads for letting me get my hands on these and check them out and have them for far longer than I should. <clears throat> but um, when I finally get mine in a couple months, I'll, I'll definitely be doing a follow-up video. And uh, you know, his work keeps getting better and better with each knife. Um, he's, he's got a number of great guys he can reach out to within the, uh, the folding knife world here and, and get help from, and he says that he has. And you know, just each, each knife's a little bit better than the previous one, so. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope, um, you know, hopefully this helps put this guy on some of your radars if you, if you want to get in on his books before things close. And uh, appreciate your viewership. I'll see you soon.